This is my uh, Chet Atkins Super Axe guitar. All right, let me get the camera in position here, and we're going to get this guitar ready for a refret. So the first thing we're going to need to do is remove the strings. Just remove them very quickly with a string winder. Them all off. Right. And we want to take rid of these strings as quickly as possible. Notice I loosen them before I clip them because it's just not good for the guitar neck to clip the strings off while they're tight. All right, strings are off there. Get them off the gears. When you get the strings off the gears, I usually use pliers. Careful not to scratch the headstock at all. Keep the pliers away from the headstock and twist them out like that. If you put the strings in there with just a simple uh, two or three rounds of twist, uh, they lock in pretty good. And I say always grab them with pliers, especially these plain wires, because they can slip off and uh, you know, give you a little blood test in your hand. You know, So uh, we don't need that, right? Okay, so um, just about got them here all off. Throw the strings out. And now we've got the tailpiece to deal with. This one is a pigtail, which I may or may not be replacing. I haven't made a final decision on that yet. I do know that it's a 9.5 radius, whereas the fingerboard is a flat radius. I mean, it is completely flat. Is you can take a a uh, fret rocking file, a uh, fret rocking tool like this, and put it up, put it across this thing, and it doesn't rock. <laughs> okay, it doesn't rock. Okay, and on the fret wires, same thing, doesn't rock. These fret crowns, they're they're a little bit rounded, but they're very very low. I mean, extremely low, and um, uh, we're going to replace them. And their nickel, which, you know, if you see my video on stainlesssteelfrets.com, you can uh, find uh, what I say about nickel fret wire and steel fret wire. And uh, I specialize now in stainless steel refrets. So, uh, uh, this has a uh, zero fret. I think you'll be able to see it if I just do like this. It has a zero uh, fret wire. And uh, the zero fret, if you'll notice, it's, it's fatter than the other frets. It's, it's taller. It's a taller, bigger piece of fret wire. And that's because the zero fret serves as actually the point of the nut, the intonation point. And the nut is not really functioning as a nut. It's functioning more as just a guide for the string path. So at any rate, uh, this being a flat, fingerboard and this being a 9.5 radius man I gotta tell you that's um, to me that's a little bit of a conflict so uh, we'll just leave that there for now I haven't really made my mind up yet uh, the pickups are are Gretsch humbuckers I guess they're wound uh, just like standard PAFs would be uh, pretty much PAF copies they're not filter trons, which I would prefer filter trons in this, and I may change the pickups, I'm not sure, but I would prefer filter trons. I haven't really delved into the uh, sustainer unit yet. Um, I don't know a whole lot about uh, taking this out of there. I do know that when you compare the other side, uh, th and this is all factory, this is the way the factory actually uh, put these uh, covers on. I mean, just very crude. Square. Uh, this is the battery cover. Here's the uh, access to the um, truss rod adjustment, which we'll get to in a minute. And then this this will not come all the way out just by removing these screws. As you can see, these 
these countersunk head uh, uh, flathead screws here, they're actually holding part of the sustainer unit in, and I think it's over here. This is some kind of a part of the electrical uh, makeup of this guitar, and this over here is the is the control uh, panel. So uh, at any rate, uh, I'm going to probably be going in there and looking around and seeing how all that works. And everything's working great. I mean, I really don't have to change a thing as far as that goes. But I, I may replace these pickups. So uh, if I do, I'm going to desolder these at the point where they are currently soldered. I'm just going to relieve them of their factory solderings because if I ever have to uh, restore this guitar originally, I can always do that by putting the old pickups back in and uh, soldering them exactly the way they were originally and retaining the value. So to get this front wire out, uh, first thing you want to do, before we forget, you always want to do something before you forget, right? And like a boss told me when I was just a teenager, he said, uh, he said, Gary, the best way to do something is to do it right then when you're thinking about it because if you don't, you'll forget. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's very basic and it's simple, but you know what? It's helped me to remember that. Okay, this is the back cover and access to the, access to the um, truss rod adjustment. This truss rod adjustment, this is something that um, I don't think there's any other YouTube on. Uh, there's one out there where a guy uh, uh, does a truss adjustment, on, uh, truss adjustment like this on a um, Gretsch, I forget what kind, some kind of solid body guitar, kind of a blonde or amber finish thing, and uh, it had one of these. But uh, if you'll notice, this has a, I hope you can see this, I, I can't look at this right now the way you can, so... I'm just making this video on the fly, folks. I've got it mounted on a stand here. This is the access port to the truss rod adjustment, and it's a worm gear in there. And you rotate this clockwise, but you have to rotate it maybe four or five times to get what you would normally get with just a half turn in a normal truss rod adjustment. And this is what you use. You use a number eight uh, spanner bit. And I bought one of these bits from Ace Hardware for like a dollar and sixty-eight cents. But what I'm doing now is I'm actually loosening the truss rod. Here, I need to take it off the anchor to do this properly. We're going to loosen the truss rod because I've got it tightened up for string tension right now. So the neck has a slight back bow in it. So I want to get rid of that back bow. All right. So I'm going to turn it back just a little bit until we get rid of that back bow. So I was turning that counterclockwise in there. And I still got a back bow. See? It's a worm gear. It takes takes an, I mean I just gave it like whew, half or three quarter turn and uh, it's still there. There we go. Kind of felt like it was loosening up well. Let's see what we got here over the frets. We got a back bow. Do we have it over the fingerboard? Yes, still have one over the fingerboard. So let's loosen that up some more. Let's see here what we can do. Kind of grab, sometimes it helps to kind of grab a neck and kind of massage it along a little bit as the truss rod is loosened up and let's see what we got now uh-huh that's better I'm getting a little bit of a rock over the frets but yeah a little bit over the fingerboard too so let's loosen the worm gear a little bit more there we go and that should do it I hope Yes, now she's steady. And in that steady position, and you have to stand the guitar to, up to do this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing, but um, you have to stand it up because you can't have any tension on the neck uh, or, 
curve. Uh, you can't let the neck be dipping like it slightly does on that uh, on that shoe down there. So um, I'm looking at the fingerboard now, and the fingerboard is straight. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to get that fingerboard straight because you've got to do a fret job on a straight level fingerboard. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to begin this process and I'm going to cut the video off because you really won't need to see what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'll show you an example of what I did before we leave, but uh, this is uh, a very hot uh, Weller uh, soldering gun and I've got a uh, little groove cut right here in the tip that's about the size of accommodate just about any type of a fret wire crown. And uh, the best way to get fret wire out is to heat it. This guitar could be problematic. I don't know yet that it will be, but I'm expecting the worst because it's an ebony fingerboard and ebony really chip out, really chips out when you pull frets out. I mean, frets love to take ebony with them. And these are the original frets, so they probably were not super glued in. They could have used high glue, which is the what is what I use to put in frets. So you got to heat the fret wire up really good, not too much because you got binding on the edges, and you can wind up cooking that binding. So you don't want to overdo it; just enough to get it warm. Get those molecules moving. All right. Now I doubt if these are going to grab it, but we're going to we're going to find out right now. And they do not. So what do you do in that situation? You get a very fine quarter-inch Japanese chisel, like this, and a plastic hammer. And what I do is just give them a little tap. right underneath the crown, right underneath the crown. And we get our fret guard shield ready. And if we can get under, still can't get under it. I don't want to really tap it any more than I have to. So let's try it now. Oh yeah, here she comes. And boy, she wants to pull, already wants to pull ebony with it. Wants to chip out ebony. Well, we can restore that. That's not a problem. This happens all the time, especially with Taylor uh, refrets, this kind of thing. But uh, we'll get it. And um, these fret guards are really, I mean, it really would have pulled a lot of wood out of there if I hadn't used the fret guard. But I'll show you what the fret uh, slot looks like now, right after extracting a fret. Um, so I'm going to continue this process all the way up the fingerboard. I just thought of this. I will need to remove the pickups. They get in the way of uh, a lot of guitars like this. And Gibson's uh, 335s and Les Pauls, I normally have to move the pickups out of the way because I want room here and all this is going to be masked off so you'll see in the next video we'll um, show what's going on with that thanks for watching